Hello everyone, welcome to module 6. So in module 6 we are going to talk about momentum and collisions. So in this module we are going to talk about momentum and impulse, conservation of momentum and finally end with elastic and inelastic collisions. So let's start with momentum and impulse. So in this section we are going to try to compare the momentum of different moving objects. Second to compare the momentum of same object moving with different velocities. Third, to identify examples of change in momentum of an object. And fourth, describe changes in momentum in terms of a in terms of force and time. So let's start with momentum. So what is linear momentum? So momentum in simple sense is defined as the product of mass and velocity. But originally, momentum is the ability of a body to transfer motion. in terms of collision so let's not call it in terms of so by collision so momentum in simple sense is the ability of a body to transfer motion by collision so momentum in simple sense is defined as mass times velocity and it's still a vector quantity because velocity is a vector quantity so you're multiplying a scalar with a vector so we can consider that the original quantity will also be a vector next so next let's talk about another form of momentum called impulse. So impulse is the product of force and time over which, so the, the product of force and the time over which the force acts on an object is simply called impulse. So we use what we call the impulse momentum theorem to state whether a net force when a net force is applied to an object over a certain time interval the force will cause a change in the object's momentum. So it can be written as force times delta t or force times f times delta t equals the change in momentum so change in momentum is called impulse and it's written as pf minus pi final momentum minus initial momentum so which is basically mvf minus emvi now stopping times and distances generally depend on the impulse momentum theorem and generally force is reduced when the time interval of an impact is increased so think about the change in momentum delta p as force into time so if the time is less, then there is a high amount of force. If the time is more, the, if there is more time, which means that the amount of impact force is less. So this is much more understandable if you look at, the, let's say, you know, if you're dropping an egg onto a plate and if you're dropping an egg onto a, a pillow. Now notice that when you're dropping the egg onto a plate, the impact time that it takes, the amount of time it impacts the plate is really less. So in this situation, time here is much less so which means that the amount of force here is very high so resulting in the egg breaking but when you're putting a pillow the amount of impact time increases rapidly while the force decreases notice that the p here stays constant the change in momentum is still constant the only thing that changes is the impact time resulting in the change in the impact force so this is the idea behind the impulse momentum theorem so with that, that is momentum. Next, let's talk about conservation of momentum. So in conservation of momentum, we're gonna to try to describe the interaction between two objects in terms of change in momentum. Compare the total momentum of two objects, state the law of conservation of momentum. And finally, predict the final velocities of objects after collision given the initial velocity is force and time. So let's start with the law of conservation of momentum. So what does the law of conservation of momentum say? It says, it says that the total momentum of all objects interacting with one another remains constant regardless of the nature of forces between those objects, which means that the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. So when you have two bodies, let's say for example m1 and mass m2, let's stay with traveling with an initial velocity v1i, and it, this is traveling with the velocity v to i. Now, provided that they collide, then the, so when they do collide, let's consider that if they do collide, then their final velocities, so then their final velocities will be, let's say, for example, this is v1f, and this value will be v to f, and still m1 and m2. Now, the amount of initial momentum is m1 v1i plus m2 v2i, 
is equal to the total momentum, the total final momentum, which is m1 v1f plus m2 v2f. So let's take an example problem and try to solve this and understand how momentum works. So what is given here? A 70 kg, a 76 kg boater initially rests in a stationary 45 kilogram boat, steps out of the boat onto the dock. If the boater moves out of the boat with a velocity of 2.5 meter per second to the right, what is the final velocity of the boat? Now notice the diagram here shows you the actual finish scenario. So this is the person, uh, this is the boat right here and you have the person on the dock. Now initially there is no momentum for the boat, no momentum for the person. But when the person starts moving, what will happen is that he tries, he, due to the friction, he pushes this in the opposite direction, resulting in a momentum in the final velocity. So they are asking you to find V2F. So they are asking you to find V2F. Now let's use the momentum situation right now. So what do you have here? You have M1, M2. So let's consider this is the man and this is the boat. So the man has a weight of 76 kilograms, the boat is 45 kilograms. Initially they are not moving, so both of them have 0 meter per second velocities, initial velocities. Then the man moves with a velocity of 2.5 meter per second and we have to find V2F. So again, the law of conservation momentum says that M1 V1i plus M2 V2i equals M1 V1f plus M2 V2f. So which is going to be M1 is 76 times 0 plus 45 times 0 equals 76 times 2.5 plus 45 times V2F. So this is 0 equals 76 times 2.5 plus 45 times Vf. So now write down 45 times Vf equals minus 76 times 2.5 divided by. So Vf becomes 76 times 2.5 divided by. So minus 76 times 2.5 divided by 45. So when you calculate the final value, that value will become minus 4.2 meter per second. So V2F here is minus 4.2 meter per second. Now the minus here represents that notice that the person is moving to the right. So which means that the boat is going to go to the left. So this is the direction. So which means V2F is 4.2 meter per second to the left. So that's the negative direction, that's what it means by the negative sign right there. Now, next let's take into consideration what others can be considered as conservation of momentum. So one of the main ones that can be considered as conservation of momentum is the Newton's third law. So Newton's third law generally leads to conservation of momentum because the, during the collision, the force exerted on each of the bumper car here causes a change in momentum of each car. But the total change in momentum is the same before and after collision because initially the amount of force that so it equal cause there is, there is an equal and opposite reaction there. So which means that the force is going to be the same. So with that we end section 2. Next let's come to the last one, section 3, elastic and inelastic collisions. So in this section, we're going to try to identify different types of collisions. Second, we try to determine the changes in kinetic energy during perfectly inelastic collisions. Third, try to compare conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy in perfectly inelastic and per perfectly elastic collisions. Finally, find the final velocity of an object in perfectly inelastic and perfectly elastic collisions. Let's start with collisions. So. In collisions, let's start with a perfectly inelastic collision. So a perfectly inelastic collision is where a collision where that the two objects stick together after colliding and move together as one mass is generally called as a perfectly inelastic collision. An example of this uh, would be a train car. Uh, for example, if you see the train engine and a train car uh, uh, trying to connect each other, once the train engine uh, sticks onto the train car, they become one single unit and they travel with a single velocity. So that is the idea behind a perfectly inelastic collision. That is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. So what happens there? 
so let's say we have a surface right here and on the surface we have two bodies m1 and m2 let's say this moves with the initial velocity v1 i and this moves with the initial velocity of v2 i now let's say m1 and m2 combine together and undergo a perfectly inelastic collision so when they undergo a perfectly inelastic collision so what is happening here is that these two are going to stick together and the combined unit now travels at a single velocity of vf so based on the situation right here this is before and if this is after we can consider the law of conservation of momentum which writes m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i equals now the second part the mass is combined so which means that we can write it as m1 plus m2 times the velocity is vf so this here is the equation for a perfectly inelastic collision so from this we can write the final velocity vf as m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i by m1 plus m2 so this is the final velocity provided we have the initial velocities of the two objects So let's take an example problem and try to solve this. So what is given here? You have two clay balls collide head on in perfectly inelastic collision. The first ball has a mass of 0.500 kilograms and an initial velocity of 4 meter per second to the right. The second ball has a mass of 0.250 kilogram and an initial velocity of 3 meter per second to the left. What is the decrease in kinetic energy during collision? So first things first, let's try and find the final velocity because we need the final velocity to calculate the change in kinetic energy. So first write down the data what is given. So the first ball has a mass of 0 0.500 kilograms and initial velocity to the right. So let's say this is the first ball. And this is the second ball right here. And this has a mass. This is M1 and this is M2. So M1 here is 0 0.500 kilogram. And it has a velocity of 4 meter per second to the right. So for example, this is the body right here, it moves to the right and M2 here is moving towards the left. So this travels at a velocity of 4 meter per second and M2 here is traveling the opposite direction with a velocity of 3 meter per second. So let's consider this as ball 1 and let's write ball 2. M2 is 0 0.250 kilogram. Now V1 can be written as 4 meter per second. Remember that this is to the right, so which means this is positive. But V2 is towards the left, so it can be written as negative. So negative 3 to 0 0.00 meter per second. Remember that whenever you see the signal, whenever you see the sign for velocity, you have to mention the direction because without mentioning the direction, we cannot judge the problem. Now they are going to stick together because it's a perfectly inelastic collision. So from that we can write m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i, I'm sorry, this is v1 i v2 i is equal to m1 plus m2 times vf. First let's find vf, we have everything that we need. So m1 v1 i plus m2 v2 i by m1 plus m2. So m1 is 0.5 times v1 i is 4 plus m2 is 0 0.250 times negative 3 divided by m1 plus m2 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 so from this calculated value we can write that vf is 1.67 meter per second to the right now they are asking us to calculate the change in kinetic energy so which is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy so the final kinetic energy is the total mass which is m1 plus m2 times velocity square minus uh, initial kinetic energy is half m1 v1 i square plus half m2 v2 i square so half times m1 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 times 1.67 square minus of half times 0 0.5 times 4 square plus half times 0 
times negative 3 square. So we can write that this is 1.05 minus 5.12. So this is delta Ke. So this value becomes minus 4.07 kilo joules. Not kilo joules, joules. So notice that the change in kinetic energy is negative. So which means that here, notice that in So there is a loss of kinetic energy from the initial value to a final value there is a loss of kinetic energy so this brings us to the point about perfectly inelastic collisions so in a perfectly inelastic collision momentum is conserved but kinetic energy is not conserved This is going to be important to remember that in a perfectly inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved and you will have a loss of kinetic energy in the form of heat or any other force, any other energy. Next, let's talk about elastic collisions. So, elastic collision is a collision in which total momentum and the total kinetic energy are both conserved. We call that an elastic collision. So what are the two things that are conserved? First, we can write the conservation of momentum equation. And also we can write the conservation of kinetic energy equation, which is the total initial kinetic energy is equal to the total final kinetic energy. So Pi equals Pf and Kei equals Kef. The initial kinetic energy is also equal to the final kinetic energy. So let's take an example problem. So what is given here? You have a 0 0.015 kilogram marble moving to the right at 0.225 meter per second and makes an elastic head-on collision with a 0 0.030 kilogram shooter marble moving to the left at 0 0.180 meter per second. After the collision, the smaller marble moves to the left at 0 0.315 meter per second. Assume that neither marble rotates before or after collision and that both are moving on a frictionless surface. What is the velocity of the 0 0.030 kilogram marble after the collision? So now we have two marbles. So let's consider the marble one and marble two. Now the first marble is 0 0.015 kilogram marble is moving to the right. So this marble right here is moving to the right. And this marble is moving to the left. So the second marble is moving to the left. Now the first marble is 0 0.015 kilogram. And the second marble is 0 0.030 kilogram. Let me write this as the bigger marble. So you have two marbles now. Now the 0 0.015 kilogram marble is moving to the right at 0 0.225 meter per second. So this moves at 0 0.225 meter per second. And the second marble is moving at moving to the left at 0 0.180 meter per second. So this is moving at 0 0.180 meter per second. So now write down the data. So M1, V1i, V1f, M2, V2i, V2f. So this is 0 0.015 kilogram, V1i is 0 0.225 meter per second, M2 is 0 0.030 kilogram and this is 0 0.180 meter per second. Now notice that V2i is in the opposite direction to that of the V2 V1i, so which means we are going to write it as negative, so negative 0 0.180 meter per second. So now what is given at the final part? After the collision, the smaller marble moves to the left at 0 0.315 meter per second. So the smaller marble is marble 1. So it's moving at 0 0.315 meter per second to the left. So which means that this here is going to the leftward direction. So which can be written as negative. So we want to find V2F now. Now, based on this data, so they are asking us to find V2F. 
So what is the velocity of the 0 0.3030 per kg marble? So we are, they are asking us to find VTF. So we can use either the conservation of momentum or conservation of kinetic energy. So to make it easier, let's use the conservation of momentum equation. So the conservation of momentum is M1 V1i plus M2 V2i equals M1 V1f plus M2 V2f. So 0 0.015 times V1i is 0 0.225 plus m2 is 0 0.030 times negative 0 0.225, 0 0.180 is equal to m1 v1f is 0 0.015 times negative 0 0.315 plus m2 is 0 0.030 times v2f. plus 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.030 equals V2F. So when you reshuffle, this is what you get for V2F. Now pause the video right here and try to calculate V2F. So when you find the total value, that value becomes 0 0.09 meter per second to the right. So notice that this is a positive value, so which means that here this is going to be to the right side. So this is VTF. So this is how you solve the problem involving momentum, elastic collision problems. So in a perfectly inelastic collision, you have both bodies combining together. In a perfectly in a elastic collision, both bodies are going to go away from each other. And in a general inelastic collision, both bodies generally travel in the same direction, provided that they travel always in the same direction. And in elastic collision, they travel away from each other after collision. And in perfectly inelastic, they travel together in the direction that is of the bigger mass. So the one that has the bigger mass, that one will decide the direction in which the body moves. So with this, we end the topic on momentum and collisions. I will see you all again in the next lecture.